مرحبا بكم في وهران Welcome here to Oran The city pretty much midpoint between Algiers and Tangiers in Morocco and the closest city actually to Spain I arrived here late last night from a five and a half hour train from Algiers In the 1490s for around 10 years Muslims actually fled to the city to escape the forcible uh, conversion to Christianity from mainland Spain. And for over 200 years, this city was contested by so many different Mediterranean powers. And it actually led to uh, the Turks taking over, over in the 1700s. In 1790, a huge earthquake actually devastated this city. And then again in the 1800s, the French took over and pretty much turned Iran into a huge naval base. So as you can see, and here, Iran, this city has been through a very turbulent history. What does that mean? That basically means the city, as a tourist, has some incredible culture and it basically is a melting pot of culture, history and phenomenal arts. So I cannot wait to be exploring this city and enjoying my time here. I'm actually beginning my time here in the main square. One of the main squares here. Beautiful, beautiful architecture. You can see the town hall just here with the two lions, which is uh, actually a historic symbol here in Wahran, Iran. People call it Wahran, it's, pretty, it's a pretty romantic name. In English, of course, it's Oran or Oran, if you cannot pronounce the R's. And then you have here the National Theatre. Incredible architecture. I would love to go inside, but it's actually closed. I'm not sure when it actually opens. I tried to find tickets online, but I couldn't find anything and it's currently closed, so I cannot go in and ask. Inshallah, I'll be able to go inside and check that out while I'm here. But as you can already tell, the architecture here in this city is just phenomenal. A huge mix between Spanish, French and Arab culture and architecture. I'll just take you a bit closer to this uh, National Theatre. And you also have here, Aslan you also have a tram which goes around the city. So before we go further into exploring beautiful Wahran, let me introduce you to an app called Quranly. Quranly is a very easy to use app which helps us build better routines and more consistency with reading the Quran daily. And what I love about it, not only are the visuals, but the fact it's very much different to traditional Quran apps. This app Quranly really helps us focus on building daily habits and makes our consistency a lot better with reading the Quran daily. One of my favorite features of Quranly is it actually has a habit streak, which adds an element of motivation for anyone using the app to try to stay more consistent with the Quran reading. And it also offers reminders to really help you to stay on track. A bonus, it also has a tracker for you to see your progress. On the app, they also have Quran challenges and another favorite of mine, the Quranic gems from heart to problems, to gratitude, fear, kindness, confidence, and charity. And with Ramadan coming up very, very fast, they're also hosting Ramadan challenges, which means you and I can finish the entire Quran throughout Ramadan. And also because you built up the incredible habits using the app, you can then continue these habits after Ramadan has finished. You know, I'm not always able to get my hands on a physical copy of the Quran because of my traveling. So Quranly really gives me the ability and the access to be able to read the Quran daily. So if you want to check it out, which I highly recommend you do, and you want to build better habits and consistency with reading the Quran daily, I highly, highly recommend checking it out. This app really has changed my daily abilities to be reading the Quran, and I really, really love it. I hope you do too. Now, back to Algeria. Hmm? Yes. Thank you. Après un mélange, you can have a little bit Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've just arrived into a fish restaurant. I have no idea what I'm getting. Let's see. I just arrived. Uh, they said loads of many things in French. I don't speak French. My French is very, very bad. Uh, so I have no idea what I'm eating. It's a fish restaurant, so I know it's okay. 
Ça va bien, bien manger. Mohamed, tu peux dire anglais Salam alaikum. Anji va venir, man. Anji va venir, Anji va venir. Anji va venir. Ça va bien Ça va bien. Connexion à Zara, ma Andex. This is one of the fun things about traveling, though, is even though we don't speak languages, we speak through body language. Everyone here is so friendly and kind. As you just saw as soon as I walked in and sat down, they were putting me on FaceTime with, I guess, their family members. Wow, okay, so this is what he meant by a mix. I have a prawns, entire fish, a calamari. I'm honestly not a huge <laughs> seafood lover. Uh, this looks like paella. Honestly, not a huge uh, fish lover. But I was very, very hungry and I was walking past, and all this entire row are towards Santa Cruz, which is the church which I head to soon. It's just filled with fish restaurants, and I needed to eat, as Oran is a, a port city. which came out of Oran back in the 1920s, so we're talking over 100 years ago, it first came out. Originally sung by men, later in the 19th century, then sang by both men and women. And Oran was basically, as I said earlier, a melting point of all different cultures. And that was when Rai music became so popular and really, really blossomed. And Rai music really goes against the, I guess you can say, traditional poetic, like, way of singing in traditional Algerian music and it really comments on social issues, political issues. It's very raw and gritty and I guess that's why it became so famous. It became famous a lot with uh, people who didn't grow up, I guess you could say privileged. They kind of have a disadvantage in society and a lot of the Rai music uh, really speaks about uh, social issues, political issues and also uh, economical issues. So. This is one of the famous stores you can find here. This is uh, Disco Maghrib. I think it's been around since the 1940s. Uh, it's sadly closed right now. I really wanted to come and see it, but um, I thought I would show you all anyway. So after a short taxi ride up the incredible valley, I'm almost very close to the church of Santa Cruz. And this is one of the popular spots you can check out here in Oran. The views are just incredible. There's a teleferric going all the way up to the top here with a huge Algerian flag. And listen. Look at this. Phenomenal. The views are just wow. Views all the way back here to one of the lakes and then all the way in the distance the incredible mountains you can find here in Algeria <laughs> No idea what he just said <laughs> The fort of Santa Cruz is just above me here and I've walked a little bit further down to see the other view which has the view of the entire port, the Mediterranean Sea and this side of Buran. Wow! Oh my gosh, I can't... I can't believe this is the view I'm looking at. Okay, almost time to show you. <laughs> Look at this. I've just walked a bit further, as I said, and I've finally arrived on the left to the Church of Santa Cruz with this view. All you can hear in the background are birds singing and uh, Algerian people joking and laughing. <laughs> Always here in Algeria. Wow!
this view extends so far out into the Mediterranean Sea, unobstructed view. And if you carry on going straight, that will lead you straight to Spain. And the view from the church just behind me, phenomenal. I might wait until sunset. I've just come inside quickly to see inside the church in the viewpoint. Let's take a look together. Wow. One hundred percent the best view you will find here in Iran. I'm so mind blown by the beauty of Algeria. I have explored Qatar, Timimun, Algiers, now Alhamdulillah, Oran. Inshallah, I will make it to Constantine. But if this is not one of the best views you can see in Oran, I don't know what it is. Wow! If you come to Oran, this has to be on your list to come and visit. It's phenomenal, it's so peaceful, apart from the cars. You can see for hundreds of miles, 